a blessed day to each one of you. And uh, for this week's uh, midweek devotion, we want to turn to scripture. I want to go into 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. Uh, scripture says, we know that the person who has been born from God does not go on sinning. Rather, the Lord, the Son of God protects them and the evil one cannot harm them. Let me repeat that. We know that the person who has been born from God does not go on sinning. Rather, the Son of God protects them and the evil one cannot harm them. Now, very often, it has been said that you can make numbers say what you want them to say in an attempt to prove something that is false. Similarly, this verse which states, no one is born of God sins, has often been used to teach sinless perfection, when this is clearly not what the whole counsel of God teaches about sin, salvation, and the doctrine of soteriology. Now, some incorrectly interpret this verse to say that no one who has been saved continues to sin or keeps on and on sinning. But once again, this is misquoting the verse and a misinterpretation of the biblical text as the word continue or repeatedly does not appear in the original. Too often, it is a temptation to read into the text what one thinks it says, rather than reading what the text actually says in the light of the entire scriptures. Some unscrupulous people like to use this verse to bamboozle others and exert a spirit of control over them by saying that in their particular case, they have achieved this elevated condition of sinlessness, while the rest of the Christian riffraff clearly have not attained to this lofty state of purity. But these people are performing agegesis and misinterpreting the scripture. For we all know that there are times that everyone sins. And John himself correctly points out that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. The simple biblical truth is that we were born dead in sin. That is, we were born with a, a sin nature, which the Bible calls the old man. However, at the rebirth, we have received a new nature, a second nature, a godly nature, the life and nature of Christ. So we were given a new life in Christ, which is a, sin, a sinless nature or the sinless nature. When we are born into the human race, we have one single sinful nature. However, after we are born again, we have two natures, the old sinful nature and a new sinless nature. We have a sinless spiritual side and a sinful fleshly side. Indeed, from the moment of our salvation, we discover these two inner natures are in constant conflict with each other. The Bible tells us that the spirit lusts against the flesh and the flesh lusts against the spirit. One could say the sinless part of our nature continues to be in opposition to the sinful part of our nature and vice versa. Paul himself identified this dilemma when he cried out, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of sin, this old nature? He then gives the amazing answer, I thank God in Jesus Christ. Praise God that Jesus is the answer to sin because we are born again and part of the body of Christ. We are identified with Christ and covered in his righteousness. 
as Christians, we have been promised that the Son of God protects all who have been born of God so that the evil one is unable to harm us. When Paul discovered his own inner conflict was the clashing of his two natures in violent conflict with one another, he was able to write, I have been crucified with Christ, which is, my old sin nature has been nailed to the cross with Christ. It is no longer I who liveth, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, in my human body, I live by faith in the Son of God who, loves, who has loved me and has given himself up for me. So when we discover that this is the new born again, sinless nature of Christ, which we received as salvation that cannot sin, and not the old fallen sinful nature, which must be kept in the place of death and nailed to the cross, we can understand the beautiful truth that not one or no one who is born of God sins. And we can further rejoice that the Son of God protects us from the evil one who has no power to harm us. Let us rejoice that because we receive the sinless nature of Christ by grace through faith, we cannot sin. However, if we sin by allowing the old sinful nature to climb down from the place of death and reestablish its influence over our lives, then we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Jesus is the mediator between man and God and between God and man. Let us thank God for his grace towards us in that we have been given a new sinless nature so that by the power of the indwelling spirit, we can carry out the good work that God has prepared for us to do. May we keep our old man in the place of death and may we grow in grace by allowing our new nature to live godly in Christ Jesus, who is our life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a wonderful truth is that, that I am a child in Christ. I am in Christ. I have received his sinless nature, and I pray that I may keep my old carnal sinful self in the place of death. So that, the, so that the life I now live in this body may be lived through my new sinless nature by faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. Help me to keep my old sin nature in the place of death so that my new life may be a witness of your goodness and grace to you be all the praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, this week, even as we continue this journey, we want to uh, encourage you to understand the gift from God, being a son of God, being a child of God, the gift of salvation, the gift of being righteous through this born again experience, allowing Christ to take over, allowing Holy Spirit to control our lives, to show us, to direct us. I pray this week that as you continue this journey, that you will meditate and you will come to a place of surrender where you say, it is no longer I that live it, but Christ live it in me. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you all soon. God bless.